everyone, welcome back. <laughs> Y'all giggle. <laughs> because I made a huge hand gesture that the camera didn't pick up, so it sounded really awkward. But hi. 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 There we go. I know it's the last class period of the day, and you guys are like, I'm so tired. How do you still have all this energy? I did not drink coffee, I promise you. All right, so here's the items that you're gonna need for today. We have writing utensils. I have a couple different colors I'm gonna be writing in today. We have a protractor. We're gonna be drawing with the straight edge portion, not the curvy edge portion. So make sure you have your protractor out and handy. We have two worksheets going on today. The study guide is where we're gonna do all of our practice. We'll write on it together. And it will be notes when you're done. So make sure it goes into your notes. Then we have the skills practice. This is the classwork and homework. So at the end of the lecture presentation today, you will be given some time to start on it. Get as much done. Use assistance from myself. Mr. McNutt, if you don't know him, he's in the back of the room. He'll be here to assist you with anything that you need. He'll be paying attention to lecture to make sure that he knows how to answer your questions. Um, as we go, this needs to get turned in the best that you have gotten it done when you come back to class tomorrow, okay? That way I can look at it and give you some feedback, all right? <coughs> and here is our notes paper. I clearly did not get myself ready. I did not put my lesson title. I'm sorry. Those of you who are prepared, first off, give yourselves a pat on the back. You were prepared. All right, and while I am busily writing the title and objective, can I have a volunteer to please read the title and the title only? Title, please. I will identify the law and live with the undefined terms of geometry. I have it. Nice. Thank you for reading the objective. Can I get someone to read the title for me? <coughs> someone else. To read the lesson title. Right, right above the objective. Point, line, plane. Beautiful. So that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be talking about points, lines, and planes. And we will be identifying, drawing, and labeling them. So to start, we need to figure out what on earth an un unidentified, I'm sorry, an undefined term is. My brain went to UFOs, I'm sorry. We need to figure out what an undefined term is. An undefined term is going to be a term or a word that can only be explained by using some sort of example or some sort of description, which is going to be different than a full definition. A full definition is going to give you a checklist, a bunch of things you need to look for that that object has. And if you can match every checkbox, that's what it is. The color blue. Can you give me a checklist of what I need to look for to know whether what I'm looking at is the color blue? Yeah. Give me the checklist. Is it blue? It has to be a little bit more than is it blue. Because that doesn't give us any kind of, you know, what does it mean to be blue? Just let's be a smurf. <laughs> a smurf or megamind. These are not check boxes because the sky is not a smurf or megamind. But we're still going to call the sky blue, right? It's because Smurf or Megamind or Sky or his hoodie or her hoodie, these are all examples. Or the ocean. Or the ocean. Oh. These are all examples of what it is to be blue. The word blue then is undefined in our English language. We can't define it. We can only give you an example of what it is to be blue. Geometry has three words like that, and only three of them. And geometry, and we as a class, are going to use these three words throughout the course of the year to create and build definitions and checklists for other objects 
and ways to describe these other objects. And by doing that, we will build the same geometry that our ancestors built for us thousands of years ago. Okay? Let's give you the first undefined term. Yeah. <coughs> point. The only way to describe what a point is is to say it's a location. I can tell you that this location is not going to have a size, nor is it going to have a shape. It doesn't have a size. It doesn't have a shape. And I'm going to ask you to draw points. I'm going to ask you to draw something that has no size. What? I'm going to ask you to draw something that has no shape. What? We can't actually draw a point. So we're going to draw a representation. We're going to say when we see that symbol, we're talking about a point. Sure, that symbol is like a really small circle, right? And it has some sort of size, and it definitely has a shape because I said circle, but in actuality, it's just representing a point, which doesn't have a size and doesn't have a shape. And since we're going to be drawing a whole bunch of points and probably all next to each other, we need to have a way to refer to which point we're talking about. Just like each one of you has your own individual name that you prefer that I call you by and not mispronounce horribly. <laughs> I'm working on it. Names have their own points that <laughs> they want to be written <laughs> and they want to be called by. A point must be named by an uppercase print letter. Any letter you like any letter you want to use. When you're ready, we're going to go to our study guide. I'm sorry? Letter. Letter. L-E-T-T-E-R. Letter. Go to the study guide. Now, when you look at the study guide, there's two sides. One side has the word continued. That's the second side. We're going to look at the first side right now, the side without the continued. <coughs> Let's look at this first diagram right here. Can you name for me the points in that diagram? This first one? A, B, C, D. Beautiful. What about the points in this one? Someone who hasn't answered yet. A, B, C, D, and E. A, B, C, D, and E. Yes? You see them all? Yeah. Lovely. You guys are really, really good at this. All right, let's go on to the next undefined term of geometry. It's line. Now, a line is going to be made up of at least two points. It never ends. So it's going to continue on for forever and ever. We're going to be able to talk about how long the line is or how long pieces of the line are because it has a length. What a line does not have is width. The line does not have width. We can't talk about how wide the line is. We cannot talk about how deep the line is. It has no depth. Okay? So it only goes in one dimension. Length. I can't draw anything that doesn't have a width, right? The moment I put my pencil down, the pencil lead has some sort of width. Right. More if I've been writing a lot and it's a dull pencil, right? So the best I can do is represent for you what a line might look like. So take your protractor and trace the straight edge a little bit and draw for yourself a very beautiful line 
Use arrows on either end of it to show that this thing is going to continue on. I just, I'm not going to sit there and draw a line for forever. It's just, no. No. And because we're going to be drawing more than one line, and we need to be able to talk about the line and give it its name, we have two ways to name lines. The first way is a lowercase cursive letter. Again, any letter you want, but it must be lowercase and it must be in cursive. If it's not lowercase and cursive, it's not the name for a line, it's something else. Or you could use any two points that are on the line. <coughs> whatever two points you want to use as long as they're on the line and you can put them in any order you can use that to name the line let's go ahead and go back to our practice page our study guide and we're going to look at the exercises and i'm going to zoom it out a little bit because my figure is too far away from my questions here all right we're going to refer to this figure here Number one, name a line that contains point A. Find point A and look at the line that point A is on. L. L. Beautiful. So we're going to name this line, line L. And we have to write the word line and then the lowercase l. Is that the only line that A goes through? You're saying P. Let's I mean look. M. Okay, M. Does M go through A? Yeah. No, no. Mm, no. It looks like P might, but is P uppercase or lowercase? Uppercase. It's uppercase. So we can't use P to name the line because we need a lowercase letter. So P is not naming a line. It's naming something else. So back to the question, is there another line that goes through A? No doesn't look like one. There's not one drawn, right? But let's look at the explanation, the description of a line. It's made up of at least, two at least two points. This means that whenever you have two points, you're going to have a line. Watch. There's another line that goes through A. It wasn't drawn for you, but you could draw it yourself or you could imagine it with your mind. What's the name of this line? E. The red one that I drew. A. You need two points to name a line. AD. So to write the name of that line, line AD, you need to use the symbol for a line, which is draw a line again, but make it small. <coughs> and put it above the points you're using to name the line. So this, <coughs> excuse me, this says line AD. So far so good? Is there another line that goes through A? I heard no, and then I heard yes. Yeah. Yes, okay, what other point does this line go through? D. D, we already did D. E. e. We could take our protractor and draw in one pen stroke along the edge of the protractor and have a line that goes through both A and E. So the name of that line is line A, E. <coughs> Yes? Yes. Awesome. Let's look at number two. What is another line, no, excuse me, another name for line M? Find M. B, B, D. B, D. Make sure you say the word line in front of that so we know that you're talking about a line because we're going to have a whole bunch of things with these letters going on. Line, line B, D. 
And when you write it, please make sure that you write the symbol for line above those letters. So you're saying line BD. Well done. Number three, name a point not on line AC. Find line AC. Find a point that's not on that line. I heard D and I heard E. e, e, e. Who's right, who's wrong, or is e, everyone right? Everyone's, everyone's right. You're both correct. Nicely done. And it's because D and E are not on that line. Note the question reads, name a point. You would have been right if you had put just D. You would have been right if you'd put just E. And you would be right if you put both. Okay? Good job. Number four, what's another name for line L? A, B, C, he says. How many points do you need to use to name a line? Two. Just two. It doesn't say at least two, it says two. So refine your answer and use just two of those points. Line A, B. She's saying line A, B. Is that what you're thinking? All right. Was anyone thinking line A, C instead? Yeah, I was too, which is why I wrote it apparently. That's also an acceptable answer. You could use these any letters and you could put it in any order. So if you really wanted to, you could say line CA instead. And you would be right also. Again, note the question says, what's another name? Not what are all the other names? So you would be right with just one. You would be right with all of them. Lots of ways to be right in this class, huh? Do you like it? Yeah. yeah, me too. Let's look at number five. Name a point not on line L or line M. Point E. Okay, I heard point E and I heard point D. E. e. We want to make sure that the point we're looking at isn't on line L and isn't on line M. Line E is the only one that's not on both of them. Yes, grab the pass. <coughs> Fantastic. Now, I said at the beginning we had three undefined terms, yes? Yeah. I've given you two, so let's get the third one. Plane. Not like an airplane. Mm. A plane. The Great Plains. The Great Plains, spelled a little differently, but kind of the same the thought I. process. Yeah, that one has an I in it. It sounds the same, it's spelled differently. I'm sorry, English is weird. A plane is going to be made up of at least three points. A plane is going to have length and width. So we're going to be able to talk about its area, length times width. How long is it? How wide is it? We are not, however, going to be able to talk about how deep it is. Think about the sheet of paper you're writing on right now. That's a representation of a plane, yes? It has a length and it has a width. But your paper has a bit of thickness to it a bit of depth. Sure, it's very, very small, but it has some. Because if I were to stack up a whole bunch, I'd have a pile, wouldn't I? Yes. But a plane, a true geometric plane, isn't going to have a depth. Which means if I stacked up a whole bunch of planes, how tall would it be? Nine. Yeah, it wouldn't be tall at all. There would be nothing. You're right. Because it has no thickness. That concept is going to come back and be kind of interesting to look at later on in the year. So file that away for now, okay? Let's do a representation because I'm going to have you draw some planes here in class as well. <coughs> Get your handy dandy straight edge. And I'd like you to draw something that kind of looks like your sheet of paper, but only slanted it in an angle, okay? Something like this. Uh, 
Um, yeah, trapezoid, if you know these words, yes. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to, or parallelogram. The sides don't have to be perfectly even. It's not a parallelogram. Yeah, it, there's no markings. Yeah. You're, you're not wrong. We'll talk about why as we move forward. It's just some sort of four-sided figure that kind of looks like a sheet of paper all slanted, okay? That's the representation that we're going to use when we draw a plane. And once again, because we're going to be drawing more than one plane, we need to have a way to give the planes their own individual names. Planes are named by one of two things. Stay with me, please. Thank you. We can use an uppercase cursive letter or any three points not on the same line. When you're ready, go back to your practice sheet. <coughs> Name the plane. Name the plane. N. N. Why did you use N? Because it's a capital N and it's fancy and cursive. Beautiful. What's another way that you could name this plane? Three points. Any three points, and make sure they're not on the same line. Name the plane. A, B, C, he says. Are the points A, B, C on the same line? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So can we use those three points to name it? CBA. No. C, B, A. Oh, but that's the same line. We just did a different order. So give us three other points that are on the picture that are not on the same line. D. He said D. He wants to use point D. So what other two points could he use? L. Okay. Is L the name of a point? No. no, it's lowercase and it's cursive. D. And N is the name of a point? Okay. No, it's uppercase. Good, but it's cursive. Yeah. A. There is no other way. And C. D. A, C. Are those three points on the same line? A and C. A what? A and C are. A and C are, and D isn't. And that's what we need right here. What had you said? I don't remember. I was talking over here. I'm sorry. I wanted to give you your chance. Okay. That's okay. I just wanted to check to see. Because we need to make sure these points aren't on the same line, A and C are on the line, but D isn't on that line. So those are the three points that are okay to use to name the plane. Does that make sense? Be honest, yes? Give me a nod. Yes. <coughs> All right. Yes. Let's write these names. Plane N. Make it big, capital, and make it as cursive as you can manage. We can also use plain D, A, C. Three points that are on the plane, but that cannot line up on the same line. So far, so good? We've been talking a lot about points being on the same line, points not being on the same line. And I don't know about you, but that's a lot of words to use, right? There's like four words I'm saying. How about if I give you one word to say all of that? All right, so let's give you some new words today. The word for on the same plane is, I'm sorry, on the same line is collinear. Turn to someone and say it. Collinear. Co 
whole lean year. Beautiful. All right, now all together, everyone. Collinear. Lovely. That word means on the same line. We have a word that means not on the same line. And that word is non collinear. Say it all together with me. Non collinear. Beautiful. Turn to someone else and tell them non collinear. <laughs> Very good. Just like we have words to say not on the same line and on the same line, we have words to say on the same plane and not on the same plane. The word for on the same plane is coplanar. Say it with me. Coplanar. 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 I know that when you write it, it looks like you should say coplanar or coplanar. Coplanar. But it's not. English is weird and we're talking about planes. So it's coplanar. How? Coplanar. Very nice. Turn to someone and go. <laughs> what do you think the word for um, not on the same plane? Non oh, you guys are awesome. Write it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, go ahead and grab the pass. <coughs> Let's draw some of this. Draw a plane, please. Use your straight edge so it stays very neat and very beautiful. You have this space over here on the right hand side of your paper. Draw a plane. Now I need to name the plane, which means I need an uppercase cursive letter. Give me an uppercase cursive letter. K. I heard M. Hold the other point, the other letters. We're going to use them in a little bit. It was M. All right, here we go. I'm going to do my uppercase cursive N. I'm going to try not to hide my writing with my hand. There it is, my uppercase cursive M. We could also name it with three n points not on the same line, yes? yes? Using our new vocabulary, how should I say that? Three not on the same line. Which word is not on the same line? Non-collinear. So we're going to put it together. We need three. Non-collinear. Beautiful. Three non-collinear points. One, two, three. What were those names? K. I heard J, and I heard K, and I heard L. L. Okay. <coughs> Supposed to be uppercase K. There's a line between some of these points, isn't there? Yeah. Yes. yes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line between K and L. What if I wanted to draw a point non-coplanar to line KL? Where would I put that point? I want it non-coplanar to point to line KL. Where would I draw it? On the outside. On the outside? On the outside of my plane. Somewhere here. Name your point. Q. Q. That point is not on plane M. It's drawn somewhere outside of it. It says if. Look at all your writing, your beautiful writing on your notes. All of those writing, those the things that you drew, it's all coplanar to itself. But now look up at the very top of my ceiling there in the middle of the room. You see that blue dot? Yes. yes. No. That point, the blue point is not non-coplanar. It is co non-coplanar to your writing. That point right there is floating somewhere in space. Space is going to be 
defined as a place that is boundless, no boundaries, no edges. Yes, I can hear you in the restroom. I, it's because I'm that awesome. There's no edges to space. Space has length. We can talk about how long a space is. Space has width. We can talk about how wide space is. Space has depth, so, so we can talk about how deep space is. You right now are sitting in a space because you could move and talk about how long you move backwards and forwards. You can go sideways and talk about how wide your steps are. You could jump up only to have gravity pull you right back down. You have a length and a width and a depth. You are in space. We don't have a representation for it, I'm sorry. And we don't have a way to name it, I'm really sorry, okay? But we, now we can talk about these objects floating around in space and we can do things like have them run into each other. What do you think we call that? Collision. Car crash, collision, these are really great words. About things running into each other in space. Uh, they're, they're, uh, like they're, they're, uh, they're intersecting. They're intersecting. intersecting. That's actually the mathy <laughs> word. That's actually the mathy word for we're going to have stuff run into each other. So that is our final definition for the day. Is intersection. An intersection is going to be formally defined as the set. That's the group. The set of all points. that two or more figures have in common. When you're ready, go back to your practice sheet. Something to say before we get in and start actually doing the three exercises that will close us out for the day. This figure looks really weird and complicated, yes? Yes. yes? I agree. Let me try to explain a way to make it less complicated. Do you see the dotted lines? Yes. Those dotted lines mean that is behind something else. Okay? It's as if I were holding up my hand to you and I had my hand this way, right? And you. You couldn't see through this front hand, but if you had x-ray vision, you could totally see the outline of my hand, couldn't you? Yes. This yes. dotted figure is telling you, you have x-ray vision, you can see through those planes into what's behind it. Which means this plane right here and this corner, it's behind plane O and it's behind plane P. And if you look at plane O, this side right here is behind plane P. I will, as my homework for you tonight, I will make a figure of this three-dimensionally so you can look at it and play with it a little bit tomorrow when you get to class, okay? Yeah, all right. All right. <coughs> Let's talk about how these figures can intersect, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's think about our two lines. Look at the ceiling. Look at the, you see those tracks, those lines on my ceiling? Yeah. See what? They intersect, yes? Yeah. Yes. What is the figure that they make when they intersect. It looks like they make a square when all four of them intersect, but, but we don't have those words yet in our geometry vocabulary. We only have three figures. We have points, we have line, and we have plane. Oh, that's a plane then. The whole ceiling, I agree with you, is a plane, but look at just the lines, just the tracks. The tracks are a line, you're right, but where two of them come together. It's a point. It's that location. Right there, that one. It's a point. Yes? It's a dot. It's a dot. If you think about a street, you're walking on one section. street and you cross another. Okay? The section. streets are empty. You're walking in the middle of the street. And you get to where another street comes in and you stop in that intersection. You're right at that point. Yes? Which yes. street are you on? Jefferson Street. <laughs> are you on the one you were walking on? the one that you ran into, or are you on both of them? Both. both of them, because 
It's the ones that they have in common. But then they changed the name. But then they changed the name and everything was crazy. Okay, now let's think about planes. Look at the, the wall. And look at the ceiling. Do you see where they run into each other? Yeah. That yeah. corner? Yeah. What shape is that? What figure? Uh, a point, a line, or a plane? A line. It's a line. Very nice. So two planes, when they run into each other, they form a line. The last one that I have for you is a plane and a line. Will you be okay if I say this little post-it note is a plane? Yes, yes, yes. And my pencil is a line. Okay. We're going to intersect them. Take a guess. What kind of shape do you think we'll make? A circle. Oh, a no. circle. Stop something. Okay, but now bring it into just the three terms that we have. A point, a line, or a plane? A plane. A, plane. a, line. a point, a plane, a line. Ready? Hole. You're right. Uh, I made a hole. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, this pencil is just a representation of a line. It's a point. Because you have to imagine, if this is a line, it's not going to have thickness that I could hold. And when I go through the paper, it's not going to shove the paper out of the way and leave a hole. We're talking about this location, this spot, that point where the pencil went through the paper. That's the intersection between a plane and a line. Okay? Let's look at our three examples and then we're done for the day. Number one, name the intersection of a plane N and line AE. What kind of figure are you looking for? A point, a line, or a plane? Point. A point. All right, look at this figure right here. What's the name of that point? B. If you look at line AE, notice how part of it is dotted? And right here at B, it goes from dotted to not dotted. That's the location where the pencil punched through the paper. That's where the line intersected the plane. <coughs> right to B here on your answer. Number two, name the intersection of line BC and line DC. Find line BC. Find line DC. It's C. That's where those two streets come together. Number three. Does line DC intersect line AE? No. No, why not? Because the daughter side means it's on the other side. It's behind it. It's as if I were holding two pens like this. If I hold it to you at this angle, it totally looks like they're intersecting, yes? But I promise you, I'm not going to move my arms. Ready? <laughs> Are they touching you? No. No. no, because this one was behind the other one, even though from your angle it didn't look like it to begin with. That's what this dotted line in our figure is trying to help us see. Make sense? Yes. Awesome. That's all I